I'm looking at people's affection. <laughs> I would do frequent deployments as a SEAL, six months, and uh, we didn't have any, you couldn't call each other. If we wanted to communicate, we had to write a letter. There's no email, there's no nothing like that. So uh, six months, Diane had to plan for what we were going to do the night I got home. And uh, we'd, we'd cut a rug. We'd tear shit up. And so I come home, and uh, we're in there, and she is in command this night. This is her night. She's had, got all this stuff planned. She's in command. And she has me frothed up like a rabid dog. <laughs> <laughs> Where I can't take it anymore. I mean, she's she's all over me. And uh, next thing I know, she's got a candle. And she's pulled it off of the nightstand. Not an ordinary candle. It was big. A big candle. I had watched a movie called Nine and a Half Weeks, and it was Mickey Rourke and Kim Basinger. And it was a sex scene, and she had took a candle, and he had, he had a blindfold on, and she had just barely dropped a little of that hot wax down his belly. You know, and he just thought it just tore him all the pieces. And so I thought, I'm going to try that. <clears throat> well, I got like a Yankee candle in a glass jar. <laughs> and I was trying to be so sexy and romantic. <laughs> and I had him blindfolded her. And I went to just barely do that, and something happened, and I dumped that goddamn. Oh, what? I come up out of that bed. <gasps> ah! ah! I like thought a, he was going to kill me. It was like a cup full of wax in that I candle. I was so sorry. Out. I was so, you know, they'd been burning ever since we got back. There was that much wax. <laughs> it was supposed to be a taper candle, you know, he just barely. Do it. Not, that's all I had was a Yankee candle. <laughs> I forgot about that. Welcome yeah, home, I baby. I did not. So, uh, yeah, after I was released from the hospital. <laughs> yeah, we had some lively times. <laughs> yes, we did. And that's all we're going to say about that. <laughs> or it down to a nub. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing left. Hey. I've got nothing left to give. Whew. Darn. How are you today, Jing? Uh, hold on a second. I, I couldn't hear you. Okay, go ahead. Calling from Watchmen of America. We got your DD-214 and your application. Can you tell me a little bit about your service, sir? Uh, I was in the uh, Navy, and uh, I went through uh, BUDS training, and uh, uh, after that, I was hanging around out there in uh, Vietnam, and uh, just, you know, seek out and destroy type of situation, and then doing reconnaissance. I see on here that you entered active duty on 76 uh, July 1976. No, that's, that's incorrect. I, I joined in 1971. I cannot uh, find the other DD-214 because the other DD-214 was in the uh, files that were at, at that uh, St. Uh, Louis, uh, somewhere. Anyway, it got burned down. So the, the files got burned. Well, it said your uh, net active service, uh, you had four years and nine months. Was that in the Navy prior to 1976? Yeah. That's, uh, I had I had prior, I had uh, uh, 1971, and then I re-enlisted. In the for, Navy? Uh, 
Yes. And was that as a uh, IC inter? Uh, what does that stand for? Inter uh, interior communications. That's right, and that was with it as an IC as well. All right. From uh, four years of that, and then back in in '76, you re-enlisted in '76. Yes. And effective date of grade was 77 October. And you went through Bud's training, sir, and served in Vietnam? Yes, I did. And then you got out and came back in? No, I didn't get out. I just re-enlisted. Oh. My term was over, and then I re-enlisted again. And where did you go uh, during that time? This is uh, 1976, I guess. Yeah, I was uh, basically uh, uh, after the fall of Vietnam, then uh, they had us doing different uh, things out in the uh, uh, out in um, the uh, Antarctic. A seal in Antarctica. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, crazy place to be. What, where, what were you doing up there in the? Uh... Uh, basically, we were, uh, at that time, uh, just kind of patrolling, making sure that there's no, uh, Russians and, uh, that, uh, got the base over there that, uh, had, uh, scientists. Uh, and how long did you serve in Vietnam for? I served from 71 to the fall of Vietnam. Uh, doesn't sound, uh, was there a lot of action at that time? I see a uh, number of 70, 71 was kind of like the cuff of, uh, it ending. You know, where, where, where the war, you know, it wasn't that much of seeing activity or anything like that. We did a lot of reconnaissance. We did a lot of seek out and destroy. Um, basically... Just, um, you know, just uh, doing our thing. I see your awards listed up here. Uh, none for valor, sir. No purple hearts, no uh, bronze, silver stars, things like that. Beg your pardon? I see your awards up here. Combat action, Navy unit commendation, you know, with all the uh, seek and destroy things. No awards for valor, no purple hearts, anything like that. No, yep. didn't get wounded. Well, there you go. That's a that's a good way to go. Uh, what team were you assigned to, sir? I was team uh, uh, two. And where was that uh, located? That was located in Vietnam. We had to go into an insertion in, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, I got hit too many times in the head, so my mind is kind of a little bit foggy about the details. But uh, how'd you get hit in the head? Uh, uh, this VC, when we were fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat with uh, VCs, one of them snuck up from behind me and hit me with the butt of his rifle, and then kept hitting me in the head, so I had a concussion. And uh, after that. Uh, uh, little by little, my memory's been going. I've, been, I've got uh, Agent Orange, and uh, I've got uh, heart problems, and uh, I have um, uh, diabetes, and you name it, I've got it. You'd think you'd have got a Purple Heart for getting whacked in the head by a Viet Cong guy. Yeah, well... It wasn't like getting shot, so I guess they didn't think very much of it. You yeah, know, yeah. no team two Vietnam was uh, team two ever. Uh, was the team in America? Well, it wasn't. It was in the United States. It was over in San Diego, mm -hmm. and then after that, um, you know, when we had the, when we had the war, Vietnam War, we were deployed out there. And uh, the Buds class? Was it called Buds back then? 
Ah, uh, yes. And what training class was that? Well, that was basically, that was uh, uh, Bud Class uh, 77. And, I'm sorry, uh, you remember what time, uh, what month, year that class graduated, sir? In 72. 72. Big class, a lot of guys, or how was uh, how was that training? Tough? Well, we started out with a lot of guys, and then uh, little by little it went it went little down, and we wound up having uh, about uh, oh maybe about uh, thirty in our group, and then it dropped down even more, so down to twenty, and. Uh, at the end, it was like maybe, oh, maybe about 19. Yeah, around 19. And what's, the wor what's the worst part of that training? Hell week. Hell week. It, it, hell, week was, hell week was like, it's, that's what it's called, hell. <laughs> you know, I mean, we had to go into the mud flats and then, you know, crawl in our faces and everything and that stuff really stunk bad but uh you know we endured it well, there you go uh i was just pulling up something here it looks like bud's class 77 graduated in uh june of 1974. 1974 yeah no hmm. well, maybe I uh, Check. Do you remember any of the guys that you went through training with? You served in Vietnam with. Huh. Do you remember any of the guys that uh, finished that? Uh, God, it's been a long time. Uh, been a long time. Yeah, uh, I forgot a lot of the a lot of the names because, like I said, that my memory is really bad. I get you. And why are you why are you looking for this position? Well, you know, I was thinking about doing the coordinator because I can't do a lot of the uh, running and uh, the uh, uh, rigorous, uh, you know, to do out there as a uh, patrol. So the coordinator was sounded like uh, my commanding officer wanted me to get the coordinator's position because, uh, you know, it would uh, suit me just well because I can co coordinate with him and make ideas and put, put things together. Was it a requirement here? I'm just doing some background checking for these guys. Was it a requirement here that you be a SEAL or Special Forces guy or would any veteran uh, do? No, it basically when I was in, uh, when I came out of when I was in boot camp, they showed us a film, and they said that uh, we could uh, uh, go for the, the testing. And uh, once we get the testing done, then and if we pass, then we would uh, be able to be sent to uh, Buds. I mean, the uh, position that you're seeking is it? Oh, you mean the uh, coordinator? Yes. Is that just oh. a, a veteran would do, just like a regular I seaman? Or, yeah, you know. But the seal thing know. helps or something? Beg your pardon? The seal thing helps? Uh, not really, you know. It's, it's, it's a thing that, uh, you know, they asked me uh, when I was, you know, what I do in the service, and I told them, you know. But basically, you know, the, for the for the position, it's, doesn't require to be a, a seal, you know. It just needs brain power, which I'm wondering if I have, you know. Well, getting clubbed by that Viet Cong uh, certainly uh, doesn't help. Yeah, no. Uh -huh. And then they got me on so much medication right now, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, and that's also taking my memory. Plus, I had a heart attack, and it caused me to lose more memory, so... Yeah, I uh, would think that uh, this would have done for any uh, any veteran. It would not have required a Navy SEAL that served in Vietnam. Uh, I'm a retired SEAL. Oh, you are? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at the Bud's class 77. Do you know that 10 men graduated that class? That's it. Was only 10? No, only 10 in uh, huh. June of 1974. And believe it or not, one of them was Mark Golay. He became the commanding officer of SEAL Team 8, and I used to go duck hunting with that guy all the time. I oh, wow. I don't see your name listed up here, sir, as ever uh, serving as a Navy SEAL or uh, huh. Bud's Glass 77. Huh. And that record center fire, if you, you know, I hear that a lot as part of what I do of verifying uh, claims like this. If you search the record center fire that happened in 1973, you'll see that no Navy records were touched during that. There was Army and a smattering of Air Force. No Navy records were touched, but I hear that all the time. I think your records are intact somewhere. You just have to get them, but they didn't get burned up in that fire, and that fire happened in 1973. So, right. Yeah. Maybe you uh, should talk to the guys down there and just tell them, you know, I made a might have made a little bit of this shit up, but I'd still like that position. How about that? That'll work. Yeah. I'd recommend you do that. Uh, talk to those guys down there. Warn a seal. Didn't go to Bud's. Uh, you had the service there. Uh, I see too, and that should be good enough to get you into a, an organization like that. You know, help out vets. You know. Count. Sound good, Gene? Sounds good. Sounds good, buddy. Okay. Anything else? All right. Nope. Okay. You have a good day, bro. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. You, you couldn't piss me off today if you tried. I mean, you just couldn't. Um, I'm just having a good day. Uh, that was too easy. Uh, and it's an organization here that got uh, sent to me about this guy and these claims, and they thought it was uh, strange. And, and the guy that uh, did some of the background work on him said uh, he claims he'd been in Bud's Class 77. From my understanding, only 10 people graduated from Bud's Class 77, and sure enough, they did. I'm not quite sure where that guy got it, uh, but I'm going to talk to him, and I like him. I like the guy already. He's uh, very thorough, but I Googled, before I made the phone call, I Googled Bud's Class 77 to see if anything would come up. Bud's Class 78 doesn't even exist in the database. That class got down to uh, its five guys, and they, they canceled the uh, course. Uh, ten guys, ten guys. I have all their names, ranks, where they enlisted from, just everything here. And I knew it was bullshit. You know, it's just a, a terrible thing. He could have got that gig just being a veteran. You know? But when you want to pull that bullshit in Vietnam and firefights and recons and being clubbed and telling these ridiculous stories, it doesn't do anybody any good. <laughs>